One of the world's best known supercomputers has gone from being a TV star to a far more important role. Doctors are now counting on the IBM computer known as Watson for a life-saving battle. Dr. Holly Phillips shows us why Watson could be the future of medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Watson. Two years ago, IBM's supercomputer Watson beat the champions of Jeopardy. Now we come to Watson. We're looking for Bram Stoker, who is Bram Stoker. And now the whiz kid is taking on a new challenge. Watson's in intense training to help fight cancer. What we are creating now are a generation of computers that can learn from the data that they see and make decisions. Oncologist Dr. Mark Chris is collaborating with IBM. He's teaching the computer how to assist doctors in making individualized treatment plans for lung cancer patients. Two million people with lung cancer, and the vast majority of those get a drug treatment. So the idea was to use Watson technology to make better treatment decisions. Watson has already ingested more than 600,000 pieces of medical evidence, 2 million pages of text, 26,000 clinical cases, and had almost 15,000 hours of training. A substantial part of it is self-taught, what's called machine learning, where Watson is programmed to understand and analyze English. Dr. Martin Cohn is the chief medical scientist at IBM. The amount of information out there is just a torrent. So we're going to need help in keeping up with it. It's pretty easy to work with. Things. Here's how it works. Dr. Chris inputs a patient's medical history on an iPad with a remote connection to Watson. And these are all her lab tests that she's already had. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And it puts them together in a, in, a, in a nice way. Then Watson thinks, scanning through textbooks, guidelines, and journal articles, and suggests further testing. So here we see that Watson has suggested an MRI of the brain uh, uh, to get a baseline EKG, to get a hepatitis B test and a pregnancy test. And with the results in, Watson recalculates and comes up with a personalized treatment plan in under a minute. But instead of replacing the role of the physician, Dr. Chris thinks it should be seen as a strong second opinion. The real thing about the second opinion is, you know, comfort and confidence for the person. Carol Jaxel is battling lung cancer. I think it's a phenomenal advance. I'm very excited about it. The computer is also being trained to help with breast cancer and even to teach medical students. Experts hope a version may be ready for use in hospitals within a year, a move that would hopefully make medicine better than ever, but would undoubtedly change it for good. Is Watson a game changer for healthcare? I, I think it is. I think eventually everybody's going to have something like this. Well, Dr. Holly Phillips, we just saw the good doctor drooling in the studio looking at the piece saying, I want one of those. <laughs> just hook it up in my office. But will it affect health care costs? You know what? Absolutely. It should really help to lower costs. Unfortunately, about a third of our health care costs in this nation right now are considered health care waste, where diagnostic tests and treatments are ordered that shouldn't be. Watson will really help to individualize that care and lower cost. Dr. Holly Phillips, thanks.